The second process of the deliver service and support domain is called, manage service requests and incidents. The identifier of the process is DSS2. The process ensures a timely and effective response to requests and incidents. If an incident occurs, service should be restored as soon as possible, and all user requests should be fulfilled. Incidents should be recorded, diagnosed, escalated, and resolved. The purpose of this process is to increase productivity and minimize disruptions to the business, by promptly responding to requests and incidents. The process supports the achievement of two IT-related goals. The first goal is to manage the IT-related business risks. Its achievement is measured by the number of significant IT incidents that were not identified in risk assessments, and by the frequency of update of the risk profile. The second supported goal is to align the delivery of IT services with the business requirements. The achievement of this goal is measured by the number of business disruptions due to IT service incidents, and by the user satisfaction level with the quality of IT service delivery. The process has three process goals. The first goal is to ensure that the IT services are available for use, and its achievement is measured by the number of incidents causing business disruptions. The second goal is to ensure that the incidents are resolved according to the service levels, and its achievement is measured by the percent of incidents resolved within the agreed-on period of time. The third goal is to ensure that the service requests are fulfilled according to the service level agreements, and its achievement is measured by the user satisfaction level with the service request fulfillment. The process has seven practices, and the first practice is to define incident and service request classification schemes. The entities that are responsible for this practice are, the head of IT development, the head of IT operations, and the IT service manager. The entity that is held accountable is the chief information officer. The practice receives several inputs that include, the service level agreements from the AP09 process, the configuration repository from the BAI10 process, and the asset monitoring rules from the DSS-1 process. It generates three outputs which are, the criteria for problem registration to be used by the DSS-3 process, the incident and service request classification schemes, and the rules for incident escalation, both to be used internally. The activities involved in this practice include, defining the incident and service request classification schemes. This includes how incidents and requests are prioritized, and when to register an incident as a problem. Incident models should be created for the known errors that have been faced before, and service request models should be developed to enable a more efficient response to standard requests. Incident escalation rules and procedures should be established, covering all the major incidents. Knowledge bases should be maintained, and procedures on how to use them should be established.